Can cold water plunges actually affect your testosterone levels? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're going to talk about the impact of immersing yourself in cold water and how that affects your testosterone levels. But before we get started, I want to let you know about my brand new ebook called Better Sex, Better Life with my top 10 tips that you can use to have better sex every single time you're with your partner. You can get it in the link in the description down below completely free. When you sign up for it, you'll also get access to our brand new newsletter where I send out exclusive content to our subscribers and you can ask me questions and I answer a question from a subscriber each and every week. It's completely free, so check it out down below. All right, so what is the data in terms of cold water immersion and what happens to your body when you immerse yourself in cold water? So normally when you submerge yourself into very cold temperatures, your body has what's called a cold shock response. During that cold shock response, your body activates the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight system. This causes a release of hormones called norepinephrine and epinephrine. This initially then increases heart rate, constricts blood vessels, and causes more alertness. Then our skin temperature cools rapidly and our body then activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system. It's the rest and digest system. And with this, our heart rate starts to slow. Our blood flow then gets shunted to the core, right? Where we need to keep ourselves warm and the deep tissues rather than the peripheral tissues. So those start to cool off. And this is essentially to ensure survival, right? Our body is trying to keep our heart and our essential organs perfused when you are in some sort of shock-like situation. Now, during prolonged cold exposure, your body's essentially working to maintain your core body temperature. And in order to do that, it's activating a bunch of metabolic processes so that you can do that and some things will get less attention, right? So potentially the thought here is that if you're doing all these other things to maintain your core body temperature, perhaps your testosterone will decline as well. We know that you can't go on social media without seeing someone fully immersed in an ice water bath saying how great it is. So is it really that great? I'm not gonna talk about the other benefits that people talk about in terms of cold plunges. I'm just gonna talk about the hormonal changes. Is it actually causing a negative impact to your hormones when you immerse yourself into very cold waters? So I'll preface this by saying these are really small studies. There has not been large scale studies to look at the true impact of cold water plunges on a variety of things, particularly hormonal physiologic changes. So in a 2019 study published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology, they studied 11 men and instructed them to do two separate workouts, either followed by a cold water plunge or a normal recovery. And so they instructed these guys to do back squats at about 80% of their maximum load. And they did six sets of 10 repetitions. And they did this two times a week apart. And one time they did a 15 minute cold water plunge, which was at a water temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, or they had a normal recovery. And the researchers measured their blood samples to assess their hormone levels before the recovery, at five minutes after recovery, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. Now in the control group, meaning the group that had no recovery involving cold water plunges at the 60 minute mark, they found that their testosterone actually increased by almost 9%. Whereas the people who did the cold water plunge saw a decrease in their testosterone levels by on average about 10%. However, when you looked at this from a statistical viewpoint, they didn't see any statistically significant difference between the two groups, meaning that if you, any difference that you saw was likely due to chance and not because of actual clinical findings. So based on this initial very small study, we don't see a significant change in serum testosterone levels after immersing yourself in a cold water plunge. Another study looked at 12 volleyball players from the Brazilian Men's Volleyball Super League. So these 12 guys were then divided into two groups. They did training for five days, and after these five trainings, they would have to undergo some sort of recovery. The treatment group underwent a cold water immersion, and the control group was exposed to LED light therapy. They were told it was LED light therapy, but it was actually an inactive LED diode, so it was basically not doing anything. So on the first and sixth 
day of their training. So before and after the study, they underwent evaluation of both the saliva and their blood for testing. So the other interesting thing about the study is they really tried to set it up in a good way. They told the players to avoid any food supplements. They told to maintain a certain dietary input, meaning they had to follow certain macros. So they had to keep their carbohydrates at 60%, their proteins at least 15% and 25% of lipids. So they wanted to make sure that there was really no other factors that could affect their testosterone or their other physiologic measures. Now, in terms of the cold water group, they were submerged into an inflatable pool with uh, water that was about 14 degrees Celsius. And they were very specific. They immersed them up to their xiphoid process, so right about here, for about 15 minutes. And they made sure to maintain the water temperature. They kept checking it and making sure that if it got warmer, they added some ice or things to cool it down to keep it at that 14 degrees Celsius. Bottom line, when they looked at the first and sixth ray blood work, they didn't see a difference in testosterone in either the cold water immersion group or the placebo group. So again, no major differences in testosterone with cold water immersion or without. Now again, remember, these are really small studies and we don't have a lot of studies, but there are another type of cold water immersion that's been looked at and this is particularly looked at in special forces or the military. The first study in this group was looking at five Norwegian special forces operators. They looked at these men who were undergoing twice daily Arctic dives where the temperature is usually around 3.3 degrees Celsius. And they, over the course of the days that they were doing these dives, they measured their testosterone levels to see was there an impact of these Arctic cold water dives. And what they found was that they did have a decrease in their testosterone following the dives, but between dives, meaning if they had a day without dives, they did notice a recovery. And so this sort of tells us that, yeah, maybe there's an impact on testosterone, but typically it's short-lived. Now, a 2022 study looked at 21 participants who were doing dive training for the military. So for this particular training, instead of doing diving into the Arctic or into cold water, they actually had them fully submerged into a pool of water that was chilled to four degrees Celsius for nine hours. And during this time, they measured a bunch of physiologic metrics, as well as their sex hormones and stress hormones using both salivary and blood testing. And so they did in this group of men see a significant decline in testosterone following the dives. Now, while this study does offer some interesting insight, it is not really replicating what people are doing in terms of cold plunges because they're not underwater for nine hours. And so you're not going to see necessarily the same physiologic parameters. Also, testosterone is a diurnal hormone, meaning that it is higher in the morning, it decreases over the course of the day, and then starts increasing overnight. So if you have nine hours and you start in the morning and you check the hormones nine hours later, you're going to see a difference in testosterone just based on that. Also, they're not eating during those nine hours, right? So they're fasting during those nine hours and that can have a physiologic effect as well. So what do I take away from all this data? Do cold plunges actually impact your testosterone level? Well, based on the limited data that we have, I suspect that it probably doesn't have a huge impact. And if it does, it's a short-lived impact, meaning that you may see a short decline in testosterone, which will then ultimately come back to its normal level. Now, it has been studied that stress from things like interrogations, skydiving, intense physical activity, all can reduce testosterone. So if immersing in cold water is extremely stressful to your body because you've never done it or you're always someone who's a little bit sensitive to the cold, then you may see a larger decline in testosterone levels because you're forcing your body to do something that it seems is stressful. Now, it may improve if you continue to do cold water plunges over the course of many weeks or it becomes sort of habitual for you, then you may not see such a strong physiologic response as your body adapts. Now, the human body is really, really amazing and so it can really adapt to whatever we put it through. And there is some data also that shows that cold plunges after working out may reduce muscular hypertrophy. And so that makes sense. If you are reducing your testosterone, then you're not going to get as much muscle hypertrophy as well. Bottom line, I think that if you derive some benefit from cold water plunging, by all means, continue to do it. If you don't or you're not interested in, I'm not compelled based on this data to do it in terms of boosting your sex hormones. If you guys like this video, make sure you check out my podcast on optimizing hormones as you age. 
In this podcast, I talk about why hormones are so important, why testosterone is so important, and what happens to your body when your testosterone declines in significant detail, and specifically benchmarks as to when your testosterone reaches a certain benchmark level that you start seeing issues with erections or you start seeing issues with other physiologic changes. So check it out. I think it's super informative and super helpful. And as always, I'm going to take care of yourself because you are worth it.